This snippet is adding an Ajax control using Microsoft's Expression Web 2. I'm Matthew Hendershot, presenting from Zoom In Online for Microsoft. In this tutorial, we are going to look at Microsoft Ajax and how it works with ASP.NET 2.0 and higher. Ajax has been around for quite some time now, even though the term itself was introduced sometime in 2004. It stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, despite the fact that it doesn't have to use either of the two technologies. The idea behind Ajax is the ability to refresh a portion of the web page, retrieving the necessary information for that portion from the server without the user's browser having to do a full round trip to the server and back. With the introduction of Microsoft Ajax for ASP.NET in 2005, this interaction became considerably simpler and, at this point, almost standard practice. We are going to build a simple web page that displays an image in a server-side image control. Below the image, we'll add a button control that will toggle the image display. Finally, a label control below the button will keep track of the date and time that the button was last clicked. We will first do this without Ajax, then add the necessary controls from Expression Web's toolbox and see the difference that it makes. Depending on your PC's setup, you may need to download the Ajax library from the ASP.NET backslash Ajax website. The library is built into ASP.NET 3.5, which is based on the .NET 3.5 framework, but comes as a separate download for ASP.NET 2.0. If you've kept up with Windows updates, you most likely already have it, but if you do not, visit the ASP.NET website and download the ASP.NET Ajax library. To get started, open Microsoft Expression Web, then select File, New, Website. From the New dialog box, select General, and select Empty Website. Choose a path and a folder for the new site and click OK to continue. After defining the location of the site, add two images to the folder where the site was created. For the purposes of this tutorial, we will be using two JPEG files, Garden01 and Garden02.jpg. Create a new ASP.NET web page by going to File, New, Page. Ensure that the page type is ASPX and that the programming language is set to VB. Save this page as default.aspx. The new ASP.NET page will have the server-side form element already in place, which is outlined via a gray dotted box. All controls that we will be creating or modifying in this tutorial need to be placed within this area. To add the necessary controls, visit Expression Web's toolbox, found in the upper right-hand corner. Locate the section labeled ASP.NET Controls and then look for the standard subgroup. Find the control called Image and drag it into your form. Select the image control in the editor and focus your attention on the Tag Properties panel in Expression Web, located in the lower left-hand side of the interface. Set the image URL property of the control to tilde backslash garden01.jpg. Position your cursor after the image control and hit enter twice. Now, go back to the toolbox and locate the button control. Drag out the button control and place it under the image control. Select the button control and look at the tag properties panel. Change the text property found under appearance to Change Image. Then, scroll to the bottom and locate the button's ID property. Change it from Button 1 to BTN Submit. Position the cursor after the button control and again hit Enter twice. Locate the label control from the ASP.NET controls and drag and drop it in below the button control. Select the label control by clicking on it and again go to the Tag Properties panel. Under the Appearance section, remove the word Label from the text property. Scroll towards the bottom of the Properties panel and locate the property called ID under the Miscellaneous section. Change the value of the ID property from Label 1 to LBL Date Time. Now, switch over to the Code View and add the provided code just above the HTML tag. Modify the code for your ASP button control by adding a new attribute called onClick. OnClick will call the routine you just added above. Your button code should now look like this. The code performs two actions for us. 
The first is to set the current date and time for our label control when the page's load event is triggered. This event fires each time we load the page or have a postback event. The second routine is designed to toggle the picture displayed by our image control. If we're displaying the first image, it will change it to display the second. If the second is being displayed, it will revert back to the first. Save your page and preview it in a browser by clicking the View in a Browser icon in the standard toolbar of Expression Web. As you test your page, notice how the screen flickers every time you click the button. Also, note the time changes in the label control we're using. Every time you click the button, the time in the control gets updated. Close your browser and get back to the editor. We are now going to create a second version of this document, this time using Ajax. To do so, right-click on default.aspx in the folder list. Select Copy from the menu. Now, right-click over the root folder on your site and select Paste. This will create default copy onespx Rename it to default underscore ajax.aspx by right-clicking over the new page and selecting Rename. Double-click on default underscore ajax.aspx to open it in the editor. Switch to Design View and drag out a Script Manager control, which you can find in the toolbox under ASP.NET Controls in the Ajax subgroup. Drag and drop the Script Manager control in front of the image control in our form. Script Manager should be the topmost item in your page. Expression Web will display the control with a small exclamation symbol. Click on the Script Manager link that appears within the control. The reason for this behavior is that we do not have enough information as part of our application to use Ajax. Expression Web will display a message about adding a web.config configuration file to our application that will bring in the necessary library components for us to use. Answer yes to the warning. A new web.config file will be created and the scripts manager's warning will be cleared. The script manager control is typically the first control on an Ajax page because it is responsible for loading the various JavaScript libraries used by other Ajax controls, such as the update panel, which is what we're adding next to our page. Go back to the toolbox and locate the update panel control, also found in the Ajax subgroup. Drag out the update panel and place it right after the script manager control. Now, select the image control by clicking on it and drag it into the update panel. Repeat this step for the button control. In the end, both the image control and the button control should be sitting inside the update panel, while the label that displays the date and time will be sitting outside of the update panel control. The update panel control is responsible for rendering the control HTML contained within it. It does not update anything else on the page except its own contents. This allows you to refresh or modify part of the page instead of reloading the entire page each time. This cuts down on the amount of bandwidth used and also makes the pages appear to load and work much faster. Update Panel has a number of settings, including the ability to refresh its contents conditionally. A web page may have several Update Panel controls at a time, which allows you to configure different events to refresh different portions of your page. Save and run the default underscore ajax.aspx page. Notice that the image transition is a lot smoother without any flicker on the page itself. Also, note that the date and time display does not change, but is actually fixed to show us the date and time we launched the page, and not the postback date and time. The reason for this is that only the contents of the update panel are being updated. Because our label control is outside of the update panel, its HTML is not re-rendered every time we do a postback. The postback is also not noticeable because it's now happening without a page refresh. The same subroutine gets called, and the server still returns the same HTML, but it is done asynchronously and only for the contents of the update panel. Thanks for watching. I'm Matthew Hendershot from Zoom In Online, presenting for Microsoft.